Hello and welcome back again to the next episode of the Dancer course. And just to remind you, uh, you can see the slide and you can see it's Dancer, uh, but we are using actually Dancer 2, as you can see it in the, in the code. Um, these days, if anyone is using Dancer, Dancer meaning Dancer 1 actually, uh, they probably should uh, convert uh, uh, their application to Dancer 2. And, uh, but you definitely shouldn't start a new application using Dancer, to, Dancer uh, the old Dancer 1 these days. So when I'm saying Dancer, I actually mean this time uh, Dancer 2 all the time, but it's just a waste of uh, time uh, saying every time. So we had, the, the, in the previous video, we had uh, the first Hello World application. We didn't try it, uh, but um, uh, we just used the one that uh, comes with the slides. Later on, we'll try to write one uh, or by ourselves to see how that works out. But uh, a couple of things, uh, more things that I would want to, to say about this application. And then we can go on and see how can we write a test for it? And why would we want to write a test for it? So one thing that you I wanted to say is that you might notice that I don't have use strict and use warnings here. And not, I don't even declare the, the version uh, of, of, of Perl. And uh, so use strict and use warnings is not strictly necessary here because use dancer 2 already enables them and um, I don't think that it also enables other other features of um, newer versions of Perl but uh, these two definitely um, so you don't need them I'm not actually hundred percent sure that it's a good idea that we don't have the use streak because then some people come and uh, might learn from this and uh, start writing other code without use streak but uh, it definitely looks nicer than we don't have these extra extra lines. So I don't have it then. And as you can also see, maybe you have noticed the difference now, it's in bold already uh, because I've changed uh, the slide uh, to have these, the command and the URL stand out a little bit. Okay, so on the next slide, uh, we see another file which is called test.t. And if you look at the directory either here, okay, so that's the test.t is there. And here as well, also, if I can type in, if I type in there, you will see that there is a file called test.t, which is a test uh, file. In most of the courses I see, um, people just, web, web application courses, people just start writing web applications and adding more stuff and adding more stuff and never run a test. And I believe that, um, I don't really believe in, in, in getting, using test-driven development as a, enforcing test development okay the, the word enforcing is is the is the right one that is that i don't like um so test driven development would mean that you first write your test and then you fill in the blanks uh, to make sure that the uh, um your code works pro uh, properly i think it's a little bit too extreme or especially especially when you're learning a new technology uh, you don't really know what uh, what to expect and you're writing a new application sometimes you would actually want to to see it uh, in your eyes as we did uh, when we visited the website and uh, so that it, it showed us hello world uh, but uh, it's definitely a good idea to write unit tests that will check whether your code works properly as you make progress with your application and i it's better to to start it uh, right at the beginning so i won't wait till we have an application or we uh, know all kind of code, I would like to show you right away how to write tests for uh, Dancer. So as usually you would write a .t file, that's sort of the standard in Perl. Here I do have use strict and use warnings because um, here this is not enabled uh, automatically. Uh, I also import uh, the test more module, which is the standard uh, testing library uh, of Perl. There are a couple of others, but uh, I'm using this one. And then a bunch of other modules that I, I need for, for testing. So we have our application right now in this app.psgi file, which is um, good for these uh, really small examples. Later on, we'll change this uh, whole uh, infrastructure, but for uh, really small examples, it's, it's, it can be useful. But we have to somehow load it into memory and run it. So one way would be is to start the whole application and then access it with something like curl or some so like a web, re uh, web request out outside externally. But uh, uh, but um, Dancer provides us uh, this nice uh, testing framework. Actually, 
Dancer is built on top of, of Plaque and Plaque provides that. Um, in, or maybe it's not the right way to say that Dancer built on top of Plaque, but it uses the uh, Plaque. So we can use the Plaque Util Load uh, PSGI function uh, to uh, and give it the name of the of the test of the application file, which in case we probably need to the dot slash uh, to make it find it. Uh, I'm actually not sure that I read it. We can try to uh, edit this one. And this loads the application. To, so instead of running it and waiting for you the, for the browser to access it, it returns the application. Uh, it's because the way it's, it was written. So it uh, calls the application and then it also returns it. Um, so it returns the application and then we can use connect uh, send in request to this application. Okay, basically. So this is this is uh, the representation of the application. Then we can uh, use the plaque test framework to create a test object. So we got it, it received the application object. We get the test object, and now to this test object, test object, sorry, we can send in requests. So with the arrow notation, which actually, if you are not familiar with Spur, this is the invocation of methods. So in most other languages, is the dot would be a dot. Uh, to invoke a method in Perl, a single arrow, single so this kind of arrow is the same is the uh, invocation of a, of a method. So there is we have the test object, and then we send in a request, which is a get request, and we send it to the slash, so the root uh, pass. That's what the one that we have defined, and we get the response back to some variable. Again, we define a variable here, and then. Uh, this is what represents the, the response. In the response, we can check uh, various things. So we could uh, check the status code, uh, but for some reason I, I'm checking here the status line, uh, but there is also, I think the, the status code is just, it would be just uh, 200. So this is the HTTP status. So here, this is the is function that comes from test more that gets uh, the actual result which is supposed to be 200 OK, compares it to the expected result. And there's also some explanation uh, that I just, uh, an arbitrary string that you can give. So you will see um, if something breaks, then what exactly was the explanation for that. And the other thing is uh, the rest content uh, will give you the, all the content that was returned uh, to you. So that's what basically what would have been returned to the browser if it was a browser. and Normally, I mean, in, in real web application, this would be a huge uh, or a whole HTML uh, file here. Uh, but because we are at the really beginning, it's only returning the hello world string. So uh, we are comparing where the content that we received is indeed the hello world and exclamation mark uh, uh, string. And again, we have some explanation that this is like the, the con content. And then finally, I have to call the done testing from again from the test uh, more module in order to uh, tell the testing system that we have reached the end of our tests uh, otherwise i would have to tell it how many tests to expect so, so in this case it would be planning for two tests uh, but uh, nowadays it's more common that people would just call done testing at the end of the the file and uh, if we reach uh, successfully this uh, line that it means that all the tests were executed and if there everything was okay then it means that every every test was successful one last thing so so you already saw that the black util uh, the one that we imported here but used here uh, is was used here the black test was used here you don't see where the http request common is used that's where that provides this function the get keyword here that uh, uh, tells basically uh, the request that is going to be an HTTP GET request and not a POST request or something else. Later on, you'll see those as well. So this is how you write the test and how do we run the test? So we use the prove uh, command and if I just type it in, it won't run by default because it was by default, it's looking for a T director, a directory called T, and inside there, it's looking for the test functions. Uh, instead of that, I'll have to uh, write, give it the name of the file, and I can I don't need the dot there either. 
and now it's running so you can see that this is it says that all tests were successful uh, actually i could have run it with minus v and then you would see all the test cases that were as printed out so those test cases the status and the content you can see that with the verbose mode you see actually uh, the test cases and then again the, the summary that everything was uh, working fine so this is basically how you test and we can later on see what happens if something is um, not working properly how that uh, does that behave but uh, for that we'll have to already start using the editor so we're going to use that uh, see that in the next video for now what I recommend is that you go ahead and try to um, follow all the things that if you haven't done it yet then you install Perl, uh, install Dancer, make sure that you can um, run, uh, load it uh, with the uh, Perl-m uh, command that you saw earlier and download the zip file and then try to boost the application, run the application yourself and also try to run the tests so remember the test was in the same directory where we had the, the project and then just run proof and the name of the test file. So that's it for now. See you in the next video.